Yeah. Everybody's class starts at 150. Not, it's not 150, it's 140. We're, we're good. 144. Okay. okay. Until I became a parent, I did not know the importance of sleep. I remember <coughs> bringing a newborn home that first week. I think I got three to four hours of sleep that whole week. I remember being on a rocking chair, waking up saying, where's my son? And he's on my chest. <clears throat> Sleep plays such a huge role in our physical, emotional, and mental health. Today I want to explain the importance of sleep for our body. I think we can all admit, after a night of a few hours, no sleep, or even just restless sleep, we can, we can start to feel kind of bad the next day. Well, at least I do. For example, just last night, thinking about this speech, I literally lost sleep. <clears throat> we all sleep, whether it's three hours, five hours, or ten hours. It's something we do every night, well, hopefully. Today, I will highlight the main health benefits of sleep. First, physical health. Um, this is from Dr. David Rappaport. He's a director of NYU Sleep Disorder Program. He says, during sleep, we recharge because our tissue cells are worn down through wear and tear each day. We need sleep to repair these. Sleep is involved in healing and repair of our heart and blood vessels. Sleep is also restorative for our brain and helps us to process and retain information. You're fine. Okay. So, um, this is what goes on when you sleep. As I mentioned, your cells repair themselves, your body releases horm important hormones, and your brain recharges. <clears throat> Next, a longer lifespan. Dr. Raymond Jean, MD, Director of the Sleep Medicine at St. Luke's Hospital in NYC, did a 2010 study of women ages 50 to 79 and showed more deaths occurring in those women who were sleep deprived. Sleep greatly affects our quality of life. Next, it lowers stress. Someone who is well rested is more likely to be able <clears throat> to handle and resolve stress than the person who has not slept. It boosts our mood and can reduce levels of stress. <clears throat> Also, it sharpens attention. Dr. Rappaport from NYU, again, who I mentioned earlier, Sleep Disorders Program, did a 2009 study in a journal called Pediatrics, found that children ages six, seven to eight who slept less than eight hours a night were more likely to be hyperactive, inattentive, and impulsive. <clears throat> children don't react the same way as we do. As adults, we just get sleepy. Children tend to get hyperactive. Next, diseases. A chronic lack of sleep is associated with a greater risk of illnesses such as depression, heart disease, hypertension, which is high blood pressure, and even stroke. The heart is significantly impacted when the body does not get enough sleep. <clears throat> Next, it, maintains, it helps us maintain a healthier weight. Dr. Gina Hamburg, Clinical Director of American Heart Association, has stated her research showed that dieters who were well-rested lost more than those who were sleep-deprived. Also, people who are sleep deprived show a slower metabolism because the same hormone responsible for sleep is responsible for our metabolism. When we are tired, these hormones increase. These same hormones control our appetite. <clears throat> the National Sleep Foundation found that being sleep deficient increases obesity. For example, one study of teens showed that with each hour of sleep loss, the odds of becoming obese went up. <clears throat> Boost your immunity. If you are sleep deprived, you may have trouble fighting a common cold. And lastly, improves our men memory and creativity. Our mind is busy while we sleep. If we are trying to learn something new, we can perform much better after sleeping. Those who do not get enough sleep perform better, though, I'm sorry, those who get enough sleep perform better, better in the workplace or classroom. In conclusion, sleep plays such a critical role in our health and we can all benefit from a good night's rest. Now that we know how important sleep is to us, for our mind and body, maybe we can try to remember and get a good night's rest because literally our health depends on it.
All right, Justin, what did you think? Uh, overall, I thought the speech was like, okay. Oh, excuse me, sorry, sorry. It was great. <laughs> um, your sources were like thrown out there. You know, the information we needed to hear was, you know, was perfect. Uh, you were speaking a little bit too fast, made it seem like you were nervous a little, but, you know, at the same time, you were still able to like, you know, talk through the whole thing. But overall, I thought it was great. Okay. Since everybody's in a rush, uh, we'll get going uh, very quickly here. Uh, I like the personal example as your attention device. You explain what the subject is going to be pretty clearly. Uh, you lay out the thesis subject uh, well, and I think you've got a good justification for it. Uh, the preview, there's really not a much of a preview. You just kind of tell us that you're going to be talking about the benefits of sleep. That's as close as we get to a preview. And then in the body of the speech, you do try and signpost a couple of things. Um, you know, physical benefits, uh, lifespan, and then you mention uh, kind of diseases, and there's like a whole laundry list of things that fit into this category. Um, that might have been something that could have been the, the whole purpose of the speech by itself, and maybe grouping those into uh, subcategories is a way of talking about this. There's excellent information in the speech. I like the research that you've got there. That works pretty well. Um, it's, so it's organized reasonably well. The problem, I think, is partially the transitions. It just seems like it's next, 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 next. So it ends up sounding like a list. And you need to have some incidents, examples, stories to fit into the material to make it more interesting and make it sound more like a speech rather than just, here's data that I found and I'm going to throw it in front of you. It's, it needs to come to life a little bit more. Which I thought you were doing fine in the introduction, but in the rest of the speech, not quite as much, you know, that sort of thing. And that, that wouldn't be a hard thing to do. I think if you went at it again, you'd be able to find those things. The visual that you have is okay, uh, but it goes by pretty quickly. There's not, it doesn't really add a lot to the understanding. It's the only thing that you've got in the presentation. So that seems a little bit awkward. There's a lot of reading that you're doing also during the presentation. It would be better if you were less dependent on the notes. All right, thank you all. I, wait, I know we've got one more person to hear from, but we're going to have to hear you on Thursday. Hard as it is to believe, given that we had two days where we practically were hearing nobody. <laughs> <laughs>